Have you ever wondered how to make shots like this in iRacing? Today I'll show you everything you need to know about how to use the iRacing camera edit tool. So let's just get straight into it. So when you're in a replay in iRacing, and this can be in an active session or a replay that you've saved, obviously you probably know by now that you have all these controls down here where you can pause and play, you can fast forward, rewind, you can skip a frame back, skip a frame forwards, skip to the end, skip to the beginning, slow-mo at varying different speeds, and then save your replays with this. Then underneath, obviously, you have these buttons so you can go through your laps. And down here, you can cycle through your different camera types and choose which one you want from the drop down. Now we'll get into what quite a lot of people actually don't know about. So if you're wanting to do something a bit more creative and move the camera and be a bit more free with it, this is what you want to do. So first up, you want to hit Control F12 and that'll make this little menu over here pop up. Now, if you want to move the menu, press Alt K that will highlight it blue, and then you can move it to wherever you want it to be. I'll just pop it over here somewhere. And now you can see all these controls and different things that you can change. So at the very top, you have your position types. So this changes what sort of shot it is that you're looking for. If it's a chopper shot, hit that, and then it will change the way in which it sort of records and sits from the car. Same with blimp, there you go, nice and high up. And then fixed, it will just say pointed somewhere and it kind of forgets the whole uh, chase thing because it won't move with the car. Then you have aim type. Aim type is just how you want the camera to aim. So this will be a bit more obvious if I go to a TV camera. At the moment, I've got it on aim type at group on TV one. So you can see it's aiming at pretty much just all the cars generally in one space. If you change this to at car, then it will focus more on my car when the camera moves, as you can see. Now, if we did the same thing on that group, it doesn't perfectly follow my car and it sort of tries to follow the pack as a general collection of cars instead. So depending on if you want to focus really in on one specific car or if you want to focus on just the general racing like you'd see on TV, then that's where you pick either at group or at car. If you wanted to change either of these with key binds on your keyboard rather than clicking them, to change the position type, you'd press Alt N. And to change the aim type, you want to press Alt M. That's Alt N for position, Alt M for aim. Next up, these are arguably the most important settings. So if we go back to our chase cam here, obviously the way a chase cam works is it's behind the car following it as it drives. But maybe you want to change where the camera sits, you might want to sit at a slight angle, you might want to get some slow-mo shots of the side of the car, whatever it is. And that's where you use these. So they're pretty self-explanatory, especially if you've done any sort of 3D work in the past, like let's say you've done Blender or something, you'll probably understand this. But to put it simply, Z makes you go up and down like this, pointed at the car. X makes you move away and towards. And Y makes you go left and right around the car. Now these can be done with your W, A, S and D keys on your keyboard. So for X, it's W and S. And for Y, it's A and D. But then you're wondering, how do you do Z? How do you do Z? So to do Z, press Alt and then W or S, and that will make you go up and down like this. Now, you notice the Orient section here is grayed out. So you'll notice that these are grayed out, and that is because I'm aimed at the car. If you change this to static, this will give you access to these controls. Now these, so these are for angling the camera instead of positioning it. And like the previous ones, they're pretty self-explanatory. So we have Y for your, that makes you look left and right. P for pitch, that makes you look up and down. And then R for roll. Now again, if you wanted to operate these with your keyboard, there are some keybinds. So to do your and pitch on your keyboard, press control and then use your W, A, S and D keys. W and S do your pitch and A and D do your yaw. To do your roll, you wanna press Alt, just like for the Z axis, and you wanna press A and D to roll the camera. As you move it up and down, you might notice that the camera is staying focused on the car. So if you want to avoid the camera staying so locked on the car, 
change the position type to fixed and static, and then you can move around completely freely without it locking onto the car. The only caveat of this is you then have to find the car, which takes a little bit of fiddling around because the camera just sort of goes wherever. We're near Puon right now. The car was at Eau Rouge, so we're gonna head over this way. So down here, we have some extra settings as well. Use key acceleration. If you tick that, it means that the longer you hold your direction, the quicker the camera will go up to a certain point. Then use key 10x just means it's really, really, really quick. And key step factor is to adjust how big the uh, steps from your camera are. So if you turn this right down, the camera's gonna move really, really slowly until it accelerates. And that's when you can turn off use key acceleration. Then it will move at whatever fixed rate you choose. This is good if you're doing some dynamic video shots where you wanna be tracking along next to the car or moving backwards whilst the car comes towards you or something like that. I've done that a few times. So now we're just making our way down to the car, which is over here in our glorious Dom Horse Racing livery. And we'll point the camera out the car. So now let's say we want to make a nice thumbnail for my YouTube channel. Usually I'll make quite a few different ones. So I have options when it comes to putting them in Photoshop, but I'll just make one for now. So I'm going to go for something a little bit like this, where the car is in the foreground and then there's a trail of cars behind it. Now to make this look a little bit better, I'm going to drop the camera down a little bit, make sure my car doesn't really occlude any of the other cars. And now I want to zoom in to crop out lots of this excess space around it. But here you have a drop down. This drop down gives you the options of either zoom or static FOV. Static FOV works as a field of view. That is what it is. So if we go like this, you can see it's ultra wide and it stretches this car over here. This is a ridiculously wide FOV. It's 179 degrees. It's almost 180 degree view. So it's like an ultra fisheye lens. And if you zoom it right in, you sort of get the effect of lens compression and all that from a zoomed lens. If you change this to zoom, it no longer works this way. It cannot zoom out as far because that's just not how it works. And when it zooms, things don't start warping and being weird. Everything stays at like a fixed sort of scale, um, but it literally just zooms and crops. So depending on what you wanna get, you can pick between these. I normally use static FOV because I do photography in real life and it just makes more sense in my brain to have the distortion of things going on depending on the lens FOV. Now you might see that every now and then the overlay is disappearing. If you wanna do that, it's really simple, you just press the space bar. This is also good for when you're spectating a race or whatnot, or you're watching your teammates drive when you're out of the car in a long race, because sometimes you don't want all these overlays up and you just wanna watch the car. So you press space and it hides it all. So here we go. This is a reasonable thumbnail, but maybe I wanna adjust some smaller things. So at the top, you can see that the cars are falling out of the frame. What if I want them in the frame? Well, I can lower the camera a little bit and then angle it up and we can get a couple more of them in it. Additionally, you have these two settings, Vanish X and Vanish Y. Vanish Y makes the camera go up and down. And it's a little bit weird. It doesn't change the angle like your pitch does. Instead, it treats it as a really tall picture and it's just choosing which section of that height to look at. This is the exact same with Vanish X. Instead of it tilting, it sort of just treats it as a really wide picture and chooses where it wants to look. The next option is near plane bias. Near plane bias is literally just adjusting how close things can be to the camera before they start disappearing into nothingness. Um, most of the time, I'll just have this like wherever, it doesn't really matter. If I, if I want a car to come really close to the camera and I want all that detail, then yeah, I will put this all the way at the bottom because I don't want it to clip out and be weird. And I don't see why anyone would use a setting like this um, unless you just want to cut your driver's feet off for some reason. Mic gain literally just means the volume. So as you're watching it, you can turn this up or down just to change how loud it is. And then motion blur is the amount of motion blur with one being the default. Now motion blur only works if you have motion blur turned on in your replay, which you can find right here. So you turn that on to whichever strength you want. You can apply it to the car cams or just the broadcast cams. And then here you can adjust it. When you are applying motion blur in your settings, I find that you have to restart the sim or restart the replay for it to take effect. Otherwise you don't get any. 
And just before I export, I'd like to also say you can adjust your aperture, which is basically just how blurred the things that are out of focus will be. So F.1, really, really blurred, very shallow depth of field. And then likewise, F32, super deep, not really anything is blurred, everything's quite generally crispy. So depending on what effect you're trying to achieve, you can adjust this. I normally stick for something quite low, but somewhat realistic, so around three to eight-ish. But again, it all just depends on what you're actually trying to capture. Okay, so let's say we're happy with this thumbnail. Now you want to export it. So instead of just simply screenshotting it, you can get a really, really high res export of it. And this will be in a TGA format. So to do this, you want to press Control Shift Print Screen. Once you press that, this menu pops up, go to Screenshots, name it whatever you want, and click Save. And as you'll see, it will now section off the screen into different portions and stitch them together. So instead of it being, in my case, a 3440 by 1440 screenshot, it's now going to be, I think, four 3440 by 1440 sections stitched together into one really big high resolution screenshot. You can adjust the resolution of your screenshots in the app.ini file, because obviously you might not want something as high res as I'm doing. And additionally, with such a high res render, it takes a little bit longer to do it. So if you want to change the resolution of your screenshots, you simply want to go to, you simply want to go to documents, eye racing, and then find this called app.ini. Open this up, and once in here, you want to scroll until you find dev only. To make it nice and simple for you, it is right at the bottom, so there you go. And then right here is where you want to change the resolution of your screenshots. So here you just want to simply go to your X height and X width and change them to a functional resolution, which is either the one on your display or a multiple of this. I'm not 100% certain on how this all works uh, and I don't really know the details about it, but I do know that the resolution on my monitor is 3440 by 1440 and I wanted slightly high resolution images. So I doubled this 2880 on height and 6880 on width. And that gives me really high resolution images so that I can zoom in, crop, cut, anything I want, and I don't lose all that detail. So now that that's done exporting, you should find a copy of it in Documents, iRacing, Screenshots. Now let's say you're trying to make a little bit of video. So I'm assuming a lot of you have probably seen those videos from the pit wall just by the road down to Eau Rouge where the cars come flying past at ridiculous speeds and it's just really exciting to watch. You can recreate that here. So I'm going to use the TV cam, change it to static, and I'm going to move it over to where I want it. So I'm going to use the chase cam to do this and move it over to where I want it. Obviously, the chase cam is for chasing the car, but once it's in fixed and static mode, it can be for literally anything you want. It's just a free camera at that point. The only problem is if you're in the middle of a race and you want to get some cool shots and then get back to watching, if you use something like the chase cam for this, you're going to have to reset all your chase cam settings back to normal to then watch the car from the chase cam again. It does not save these settings over replays though. So if I leave with my chase cam left like this and then rejoin, the chase cam will be back to normal. So usually when I'm moving the camera, I'll up the FOV so I can see where I'm going. I'll try to figure out roughly where I want it. Now I don't actually use the keybinds that much. I kind of just prefer clicking these boxes, but for moving around in big chunks, I will use WAS and D. So we're at the pit wall, but you can see the fence is disappearing. So if we lower that near plane bias all the way, now it shouldn't disappear. We're gonna pop ourselves in this little tiny gap and we're gonna reduce the key step factor just so I can move in smaller chunks and get the angle that I want. Then because this is a static shot, I'm gonna aim it down this way, bring it out a little bit, and there we go. That's a pretty cool angle. And then if we rewind, we'll see our car come past and get all sorts of cool shots as it flies by. But what if you wanted that same shot, but you wanted it to watch the car rather than just being static? Well, that's nice and easy. Just change your aim type to at car or at group, depending on which one you want. So I think we'll go for at group actually. And then we'll bring all the cars back and it's focused on my car because that's one we're chosen on, but obviously you can change which one it picks just by pressing the arrows next to your name. And then as these cars come past, the camera will pan to follow ours. 
Now with motion blur, this would look a lot better. I've got it turned off right now, but obviously you could just experiment with that and see what you get. Motion blur will drop your FPS because it takes quite a bit of performance. So again, up to you, up to your specs, all of that. So you get the idea. Now maybe you want a shot something like this where it's on the roll bar, but you want to adjust it a little bit. Again, this is all pretty straightforward. So just go to one of the inner car shots like roll bar, gyro, cockpit, any of those because they're set up for you already in the car. And then from there, you can just use all your regular controls to move the camera, put it wherever you want. Maybe you want like a over the shoulder shot like this. You want to like point it down at the steering wheel, whatever you want, you can literally do it all. You can turn the camera around and point it at your driver like this. You can move it down here and even see a pedal cam and the pedals do move, which is fun. As you can see. Or you could even pop it outside the car for something interesting, like maybe you want to look through the window at the driver or you want to look down at a wheel. Sort of like GoPro shots. These are always quite fun to do, especially if you're making something cinematic. So something like that, roughly. A little bit of like a GoPro style shot watching as you drive. Now, when you're on a camera that is attached to the car like this, you notice that things are a little bit shaky, a little bit rough. Now you can turn this up or down with the shake adjustment. So down, we're not getting any of that now. It's like the camera is just as solid as the car. Turn it all the way up and you get some real aggressive, violent shake. So again, depending on what your goal is with the shots you're getting, you might want to turn the shake up for something really intense or turn it down just because you want it to be focused and chill. And you can also get really, really creative with stuff like this. Turn the aperture all the way down, have the focus set to manual, and then you can choose what depth the focus is at. Do you want it to focus on the steering wheel, the dash, the car ahead, all of these things, even the carbon right there next to the camera. So basically, the only limit is yourself with this. You can just make so much cool stuff. So the possibilities with the camera tool are pretty much endless. You can just make anything you want. People say that the graphics in iRacing aren't the best in the world. And I do agree, it doesn't look fantastic, but it does still look pretty convincing. And with these camera tools, you can make some pretty cinematic content. Same goes for thumbnails and just general cool pictures and stuff. There's so much you can do. Put the camera wherever you want it, angle it however you want it, change the zoom as much as you want. You can literally do anything. Now I'm going to stop yapping and I'm just going to briefly show you every single keybind once again, just to remind you of everything you can do. Now you might want to make a note of these or take a screenshot because it gets a little bit confusing. I've got them written down. But I don't suggest that you just remember keybinds because you can just click the stuff on the screen. It's way easier. So for the basic things such as just positioning the camera, W, A, S, and D. To go up and down with the camera, you want Alt, W, or S. To point the camera, you want Control, W, A, S, and D. W, S are up and down, A and D are left and right. And to roll it, you want Alt, A, or D. If you want to change the FOV or the zoom without clicking it, you press your square brackets, opening square bracket decreases it, closing square bracket increases it. If you want to increase or decrease your aperture, you want to use Alt, U or I, U decreases it, I increases it. Again, I just click the drop down and choose one, but you can do it via your keyboard. To adjust Vanish X or Vanish Y, you can use Control X and Control Y, that increases both of them. And if you want to decrease them, you use Alt X or Alt Y. If you want to reload the textures on the cars for any reason, like you've just loaded in a new paint or something, you want to press Control R and progressively it will happen. There we go. It's still happening in the background, but you get it. If you want to increase the exposure, although I never do this because it looks tacky, you press Control E. And if you want to decrease it, you press Alt E. Now, the general theme with most of these things is if there aren't two buttons to go up and down, it's usually Control plus the button to go up. Alt plus the button to go down. There is one exception to this rule, which is shake because it uses K and Alt K moves this stuff around. So to decrease shake, it's control K. 
to increase it, it is just K. If you want to cycle through position types, it's Alt N. If you want to cycle through aim types, it's Alt M. If you want to switch between static FOV or zoom, it's Control M. And if you wanted to toggle manual focus on or off, it's Control F. So that is how to use the iRacing camera tool. Now I could have gone way more in depth with moving shots and things like that, but that is all stuff that you can very easily just experiment with. My main suggestions are to try out some static stuff first, just getting pictures, getting acquainted with how to control the camera. And then maybe when you wanna make moving shots and videos and all that, you wanna play around with how fast the camera moves using the step feature and you wanna maybe turn off the acceleration so that it stays at a fixed rate and you can get some cool shots where the camera follows the car whilst the camera is moving. It's quite tricky and definitely for video content, especially when it's not just like static fixed shots, it can be a bit difficult to do anything good, but it is possible, you just need to practice. So I really hope this video helped you guys out. If you're curious about this, please let me know what you thought in the comments below. And if I missed anything, do let me know. I think I covered it all, but you never know. I really hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, leave a like and subscribe and I'll see you in the next one.